Okay, so um, a, a couple quick things. And so what uh, you can see we have on the left-hand side key themes and down the middle we have like, what did they actually do? And then when are they effective? So uh, a big part of this was like, how do we encourage small businesses to create retirement plans? And they said, all right, well, if we create tax uh, credits, then they'll do it. So there's provisions in place and you can see the fine print at the very bottom. If you wanna know how this works for you, we can definitely provide you more, uh, more information on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But you basically get tax credit for up to 50% of the startup costs, up to 5,000 per year for three years. And so when you set up a 401k, you have to set up a plan document, uh, engage with the TPA. There's just additional costs that go in um, to running a 401k, running a retirement plan. So there's now tax credits in place to help incentivize you to do it, to help bear some of those costs. Uh, that's effective now. There's already been some tax credits in place. These are just the new updated ones. And then uh, tax credit for employer contributions of up to 1,000 per employees for five years. So not only does it incentivize you to start and pay for some of those startup costs, it'll actually give you some tax credits uh, for employer contributions that you make. So uh, contributions you make on behalf of your employees. Then the next component here is looking through uh, this idea of this emergency savings accounts and defined contribution plan. So a defined contribution plan is just a kind of the fancy term for a 401k profit sharing. But basically they put provisions in is that you can have built into these uh, is these emergency savings accounts. So um, that you can fund after tax contributions into this emergency savings account. I haven't, we haven't seen how this is going to look because this is not effective till 2024. Uh, but this will give you the ability to put money in there from your paycheck and it'll just be a maximum account value. It'll get capped at 2,500, which means it'll essentially fill up and then you can't put any more money in there. Um, so that's a, that's another one to incentivize emergency savings. Uh, the next one on here is help manage student loan debt burden. So I don't really know exactly how this one's going to work. Uh, the devils are always in the details, but it basically employers will be allowed to make matching contributions to the plans for participants paying student loans. So I don't know what the mechanics are of what this will look like, but for those of you who have stu high student loan, uh, student loan balances or you have children that have higher student loan balances, there's going to be some provisions in place that will make repaying some of those, uh, those loans easier. Uh, again, stay tuned for the details because this is not until 2024. And then a couple uh, provisions um, that have been put in place to allow for greater savings into retirement plans. So basically, if you have new plans, so this is this is our 2025 legislation, and then the last one is 2027. So in 2025, new plans will be required to auto enroll their employees at a starting rate of at least three percent, and then auto escalate at least ten percent, uh, but no more than fifteen percent. So basically, the idea is. You sign up, you're a new employee, they auto-enroll you, you would have to opt out. So now you get auto-enrolled at 3%, and then every year it goes up by 1% uh, until you hit 10% or 15%. And so that's going to be built into these plan provisions. Because I think the whole idea is there, uh, the whole idea there is that a lot of people don't fund the 401k because it's kind of an afterthought. So if you auto-enroll them, it actually will take work for them to not enroll, they'll have to opt out. So by default, people will just kind of like let things happen. And then, and then that encourages greater savings into the 401ks. And then presumably your income or their income's going up, right, over time. And so naturally it's going to increase by year by year. And so maybe it's not that big of a hit month to month uh, where they don't feel it. And so maybe it gets to that 10% level when they start feeling like, okay, now, now I need to pay more attention to how much I'm actually saving and can I increase it or do I need to scale things back um, then? For sure. Yeah. And then here's another one. Like this is just a weird one to me. Again, these are, you know, our politicians sitting around making up some random changes here. Increase catch up amount for individuals age 60 to 63 by 50% more than the regular. Like why 60 to 63? Why not 60 to 70? Why not 55 to... 75. Like it just seems kind of arbitrary, but basically long and short of it, we'll get a little bit more clarity on this issue, but that the catch up amounts will increase in that short window from 60 to 63. Uh, and then the last one is, I guess, where we're going to replace the savers credit with a savers match uh, equal to 50% of the plan or IRA contributions up to $2,000. So that's a little bit more on the individual side. Uh, but again, they're trying to incentivize um, more savings. Not sure that will work, but that's what the attempt is. Um, there's a couple uh, just high level things that I do want to just cover. 
um, around uh, this. This is actually like Jared got excited on the 529 plan and the ability to move 529 monies into the Ross. Like that's a really healthy provision for, especially for families. This one is, I think, a great one for business owners, especially smaller business owners, where you know maybe setting up a 401k is just not in the cards. A little bit more complicated. Now, if you have a SEP IRA, there's actually a Roth style version of that, or or a, a simple IRA. There's a Roth. I don't really know how this is going to work because essentially a SEP IRA is an employer um, contribution. And so it only allowed for pre-tax. And so they're obviously going to put this provision in is now you can fund that. So it's no longer a deduction. So the thing to be clear about that is when you fund a SEP IRA, you get a tax deduction at the business level, right? Whether it's sole proprietor or a S corp. And now you have a Roth, you won't get that tax write-off because it's it's a it's a Roth contribution, but at least you will have that provision. So, so I think that that's uh, that's actually kind of a cool feature. It does add some simplicity. Uh, it, it you know it is another benefit of this, but it also is now 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 um, a lot of our clients who have a SEP and have opted not to do the four hundred one k route uh, can add the Roth provision with without a lot of headache. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's less costly, right? The four hundred one k you have third party administrator fees. It just annually it takes a little bit more money to run on an annual basis, but um, it, it opens the door for a little bit more sim simplicity, but less cost as well. Yeah. That, and that's a big one, right? Is trying to keep some of the costs down. That's why a lot of these things, when we're going through, you know, every time you add new layers of rules, it usually adds more compliance and more cost for business owners. And I think as a firm in general, we're a big proponent of like, let's make things simpler and less compli less compliance, but uh, you know that that doesn't ever seem to happen. So the reality that's why we is, never it would never be a politician, John. That's why we <laughs> never be in Washington. No, that would it would not work because we would want to make things easier on people, not harder, and have more yeah. rules to follow. So, but I guess there is some job satisfaction or job security, excuse me, for us because as the complexity continues to occur, we have to stay on top of that so that we understand the best um, type of retirement plan for our clients. Um, and then as we go into this last one, so this um, just is dealing with, this is on the matching contributions. Um, so is this one different, Jared, than the other? Or is this just the, exactly the same? Because we were, oh, we were dealing with catch-up uh, contributions. So yeah. this one's, that's right. This one's the matching contribution. Match okay, versus so, catch-up, yeah. Yeah, so basically um, there's going to be a provision in place uh, for employers that if you want to make your match, right? So a lot of employers will put a match in like 3%, 4% or 5%. You will have the option to do it as a Roth um, contribution and instead of a deductible kind of pre-tax contribution. So the the big change on the big I guess thing to know is that you as the employee, if you choose to receive it right now, when you get a match, you don't pay any tax on it until you withdraw it in retirement. However, if you opt to receive a match in a Roth format, then if you notice on here. I think it's the second, which, which bullet point is it? It's the... Oh, yeah. I mean, second I from the on. bottom. Second from the bottom. Okay. Yeah. So basically when you make the, when you make the Roth, uh, when you, when you opt to have the Roth paid as a match, um, or sorry, the match paid into your Roth, you will then be subject to income tax. So if your company matches $5,000 on your behalf into your Roth account as part of the matching, that will then be taxable income to you. Uh, now, the cool thing is on the back end, when you spend that money in retirement, it's in a Roth account, so you won't pay tax later, but you have to pay tax up front. So a lot of...